Long ago, there were people who devoted all their energy, their talent, and their imagination into crafting magnificent works of art. They didn't label themselves as artists, nor did they refer to their creations as art. These creations were not meant to be sell or trade in markets, grace the halls of museums. Some of them were not even meant to be seen. What was the purpose of these creations? The persons who made them had a sacred duty. They had to infuse in their creations the hopes and the dreams of their entire community. Every color, every detail, every shape was an offer, a means of communication, a vessel to carry the needs and the wishes to the whole community so it reaches a higher being, a supreme power. In return, these people believed that their gods and goddesses will ensure health, prosperity, and safeguard the lives of the whole community. Although these practices were more common in ancient times, we can still find today communities using art as a medium. Right now, as we are sitting here, there may be a woman in Kunayala, in an island in the Caribbean Sea, waking up and quickly looking for something to sketch an image she saw in one of her dreams. This image will later become a mola, which is a textile artwork. It's well known for a very intricate needlework and layers of cloth of various colors. This mola will later become part of one of her blouses and adorn her chest and her back. This symbolic abstract image, this photograph taken during a journey to her inner world will be part of her daily clothes. For me, that's a window, a reminder of the existence of this inner world that we so often dismiss. When I first went out to the streets to make art, to fill the walls of the, of the public walls with my paintings, I was far from this concept of art as a medium. For me, art was rooted in the artist's inner emotions, thoughts, experiences. And I imagined myself as this, this kind of artistic savior that would take my art out of the academic spaces and share it with everybody like bread with the hungry. Luckily, the street quickly shattered my pride. I, after getting used to insults and criticisms thrown at me, at me from passing cars, and um, when I started to enjoy the brutal honesty of people in the streets, honesty that I would never find in a proper art space, then I stopped speaking about myself and about my artwork to any curious passerby, and I took off my fancy hat of storyteller, and I slowly became a story listener. What is the difference? A storyteller is eager to capture you with a compelling story. If he achieves his main goal, he will leave feeling satisfied for a mission accomplished. A story listener, on the other hand, is willing to discover whatever you are willing to share. It's curious, it's willing to learn. If the main goal is achieved, this story listener will live enriched by this encounter, having a wider vision of the world. 
And that's what I wanted to become. So I start, people will come very curious because at that time it was very strange for a woman to be, for anyone to be painting in broad daylight, a public wall, but for a woman it was even more strange. So people will come and ask me, why, why are you painting that on that wall? Like, what, what are you doing? So I will ask instead, instead of answering, I will ask, what do you think about it? What, what, what is your interpretation of this image? And um, I discovered that when we read an image, we speak a lot about where, who we are, where we are coming from, what experiences we are going through. So I ended up having these deep, marvelous conversations with strange people in the middle of the street. So my art became this very special space in which I could have these deep encounters and learn, and learn because that was my role in that moment. I was not anymore the artist who is storytelling, who is sharing his, the artist's statement with the audience. I was just there to listen to whatever these strangers were willing to share with me. So at this point, I felt my art had become sort of an offering. In return, I was getting not only these powerful, meaningful conversations, I was only also getting food, water, and even protection in some areas of my city. So at this point, I wanted to take, it, take, take this, this relationship that was growing, I wanted to take it a step further. So I started to create the images from scratch with different communities. So I will decide together with the community what images will be painted in the wall, what story should be told. Every project started to connect more and more people. I co-created murals with refugees, with children with Down syndrome and their families, with communities whose elders wanted to, sh to share the story of their community with the newer generations. So this, this, this decision of leaving the regular normal art spaces to go to the streets, I, I took it because I thought my art could change the world. So after many years, many murals, some, many of them have been covered by propaganda or destroyed. There's only one thing I can tell you with absolute certainty. The people that I've, I have met, thanks to my artistic practice, have completely changed my world. I have discovered new realities that at the beginning seemed very strange, but ended up feeling very familiar. And for this, for this change in my world, I would forever be thankful to these people and to my art artistic practice that enabled this connection. And connection, it's every day more difficult to achieve. And I want to share a story with you of an art, live artwork I was part of. We set up this cardboard desk in the middle of the street, and a poet will sit and offer his services of personalized poem writing. So he will sit there and wait for someone to request a poem. So this woman comes and asks for a poem for her recently deceased husband. She sits down and shares all what she was going through at the moment. She spoke about her love. She spoke about this man. She spoke for a very long time, and this poet listened patiently, concentrated, focused, careful not to let any, any detail slip away. So he writes the poem, hands it to her, she leaves. Some days after that, this poet is walking around the same place where we had put, set his cardboard office some, some days before, and um, some, a man approached him and told him, 
you are the poet. You know what? My mom liked so much your poem, she framed it, and now it's in her living room next to the picture of my father. This poem will not be liked, posted, shared by millions in social media. It won't win an award. It won't ever be published in a book. It won't ever be explained by a school professor. Does any of this make that connection in between that woman and that poet any less powerful, any less meaningful? And I ask you this because we live in a time when it seems that if what we do is not reaching millions of people, then it has no value. And um, for me, the value is right there. In, in that one true connection in between these two persons. And this is, as I said, become, becoming every day more difficult because we are in this race full of tons of movies that we must watch, people that we must follow, books that we must read, museums that we must visit. But it's puzzling to me, what's the point on consuming all these artworks or on spending hours looking at, paint, at, paint, at paintings, at movies, reading books, if none of these artworks is making us connect with ourselves or with another human being? What is the point? I've been asking myself how, um, how broad is the um, power of listening. And for me, the answer is, again, in the listening. Are we really listening to that person that created that artwork and who is speaking through that piece of work to our humanity? Are we listening to the people close to us? Are we really concentrate and focus with attention, listening to ourselves, not only to the horrible stories that sometimes our brains make up and makes us anxious and stressed. Are we listening to our body? Are we listening to our emotions? And I think there is, there is this powerful thing that we are missing out because we are busy listening to all this other stuff that is coming from outside. So sometimes listening to ourselves can be a little bit painful. And um, I wanted to share with you um, my personal experience at the moment. I'm going through these challenging times, and um, I'm creating these images that are not really meant for anyone's eyes but mine. I'm not sure if I will share them in the future. And um, I believe I feel this same urgency of this woman in Kunayala of translating her dreams into drawings. I'm sketching this postcards from this inner journey. And they are not to sink in my own shadows, but to create out of them, to consciously make these shadows part of the constant creation that I am and that we all are. There is a song in Spanish that says, cada cabeza es un mundo, and it means each head is a world. May art be the bridge that allows you to visit new worlds and allows new ideas to come to your world and transform it. May art be the vehicle that you use to explore your inner landscapes. May art be the medium that connects you to the humanity that unites us all. Thank you.